I, I already regret making this video. Hey guys, it's Corey. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, hi. It's nice to meet you. I upload videos every Tuesday and every Wednesday. If you want to get the notifications, please hit that little bell icon way up in the corner that you definitely forget about all the time, but it's fine. Also, if you want to throw me that follow on Instagram, I spend a lot of time on Instagram. Honestly, Instagram followers mean a lot to me. Please just do it. I want to feel cool. Today's video is going to be kind of a tell-all. I am going to be reading old journal entries and this video was requested by my sister probably because she wanted to know every dirty detail about my life but I thought it might be fun to go back and reflect however the stipulation that I have is I was never a physical breakdown journalist I always posted all of my innermost thoughts that I didn't want anybody else to see on the internet. Throw back to that website called Tumblr where everyone used to post their entire lives online for all of their high school friends who followed them to see and nobody would ever say anything except on anonymous in your ass box. So shout out to the real people who never spread your business around. You were the real MVPs. But for right now I do have my little laptop pulled up with all of my old journal entry posts and this is gonna be terrible and I'm super excited to see what a train wreck I was so let's do it so these posts are from let's see five years ago yikes I was 19 a little baby a little baby and I'm going to preface this by saying that I used to think I was funny, and clearly I'm not, so just just keep that in mind, please, please. Um, the first one I want to read you guys is, it's just a small little text post, it says, I've had crushes on all of my guy friends and have been friend zoned by everyone, a memoir. I used to think I was such like a deep kid and like... My love life is just so troubled because I was always the girl next door and nobody ever saw me for who I was and I was just being a little petty bitch about it. Let's see. A lot of these posts are under like the old school read more so everyone had to click on it so you can go on your page and like refresh and like see how many people are actually reading it. God, it was so petty back in the day. One post literally just says I'm literally hissing myself because irony. And I really have no idea what that's supposed to mean. There's one that literally just says cheers to the governor. <laughs> oh my god, why? Why did I say that? When it comes to music, I feel like all of the people around me are so powerful with their music. And then there's me like Simba in The Lion King right before the stampede scene where he tries to roar. Yeah. Honestly, I still feel that way. I feel like... A lot of my friends who pursued music have grown and I feel like I haven't really found my niche yet unfortunately in the music scene and it is kind of still very frustrating and disheartening which is why I honestly haven't uploaded a cover to YouTube in a while. I just feel like I'm not really good enough for people to hear me even though people tell me Otherwise, I'm sorry, I keep looking down. I keep trying to talk to you and scroll through for the next one to read at the same time, and it's really proving difficult. Okay, another really funny one that is under a cut from October 22nd, five years ago, just says, no, 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 no. This is college. We don't call dibs. No. And I really don't know what that's about. I don't know who that's about. I don't know if that's about me. I don't know if that's about me talking about somebody else. I have zero recollection of why I might have written that. Instead of doing homework like I should be doing, I'm thinking of tattoo ideas. I feel personally attacked by this because 
instead of doing what I need to be doing, I'm always thinking of tattoo ideas. I am currently actually deciding on what I want to get for a sleeve when I have the money. <laughs> I just got a text from an ex. Needless to say, he's missing me. I was such a cocky asshole for like no reason. No reason. Like, I didn't dress good. I didn't do my makeup right. Like, and I thought I was hot shit. Like, why? Why? Why did anybody like me back then? I was awful. I just have a text post of a song that I wrote, and it was a very terrible song. But the meaning still rings true, and I would really like to take my meaning and turn it into a new song. But the way it's supposed to go is, um. <coughs> So you can stay with her Cause well baby I don't mind You were never worth my fucking time Will you win this one? Cause sweetie you're a jack of all trades Master of none I don't know I really still like that But I would definitely workshop that a lot This one's super embarrassing It just says alright so I was at dinner and a guy I hooked up with on Thursday who was friends with my roommate came to sit for a minute with us and we talked about Thursday and he looked at me and he was like, you were there, right? And then was like, yeah, you were. And then he remembered we hooked up and he was like, yeah, you were and winked at me. Well, like, why did I think that was funny that he forgot that we hooked up? Like, I don't get it. Ugh. Okay, so this next one has a story behind it. All it says is, now remember kids, always abide by the rule of five. The rule of five was something that me and my college roommate made up, and we were convinced that it was true. And basically what it means is that you have five points of contact before somebody starts to gain feelings for another one. So whether you kiss, whether you cuddle, whether you go on a date, whether you spend the night, whatever it may be, you have five chances before somebody, anybody, somebody will catch feelings. It has never steered me wrong this far in my life, and I'm 24 now. I think we are on to some good stuff. I think it's true. I found some advice from my dad that was very wise, which is exciting. It says, think of it as a mistake. Don't let it color who you are, which is really sweet. So I have no idea what this post means, but I'm going to read it to you anyway. Last night was a train wreck. My mouth tastes like camel crushes and chocolate syrup. A boy I kissed two months ago apologized to me for being a jerk. A boy I kissed two days ago has suddenly become a jerk. And his brother is trying to save whatever we are. Because his brother thinks I'm wonderful. Tequila, salt, and lime do wonders, as do sewage monkeys. What? Um. First of all, this was... This was five years ago, and I I don't know who these boys are or whose brother it was, because I'm pretty sure nobody, unless, I don't know. I don't know. Lately, I've been feeling really terrible about my appearance. I've been looking in the mirror, not feeling good enough about any part of my body, even my eyes, which used to be my favorite part of my entire body. I just wish I was slightly prettier. Not drop dead gorgeous, but I wish I was more than I am because I hate it. I hate it so goddamn much. Honestly, there are days that I still feel like that. I feel like I've kind of grown into myself a lot more and I've learned how to take care of myself and make me feel the way I want to feel but I still sometimes really feel like when I look in the mirror things aren't what I want them to be which is normal I think everybody feels that way especially with the media nowadays 
things to do over the next month. Get a tattoo. Get my industrial pierced. Dye my hair red. Okay, clearly, December 17th, five years ago, I was really going through a rough time. Um, and I did two out of those three things. I did. I did get my industrial pierced. And... Is it behind this hair? I did get my tattoo. So... I kind of stuck to my own word about it. So there's another post that says, Wow, I'm really glad I lost my wallet. Um, and the really funny thing is, I did find my wallet on a couch on the front porch of a house stuck in the couch cushions a couple days later. Nothing was gone from it. That's not the first or last time I lost my wallet at college. So I found a post talking about one of my ex-boyfriends that says my boy is now mad at me because the night I met him at a party I kissed other guys besides him and he compared it to him going to the club and hooking up with other girls and cheating on me the really funny thing is later on I broke up with him because I found out that he was dancing up on some girls at the club not even what that post was in May I broke up with him in October so like a psychic tonight me and my co-workers went down to see these guys bike jumping off a dock into the river it was awesome that's really funny because that is actually still a really important moment in my life and I to this day can still not pinpoint why I think it's because I became very close-knit with those co-workers and I don't know. I don't know. It's still a really special day, though. I remember it like it was yesterday. Instead of dealing with my problems and my feelings, I'm just going to drink shitty whiskey and pretend I'm not a fucking cunt. That's still pretty fucking accurate, honestly. Oh, this one. So this piece I wrote, and it actually got published in my high school's literary magazine. And I'm still really mad about it because I misspelled my name, which is per usual. But it was a very, very, very cliche. Um, some of it is really good, though. So the title that I called it was T7. Um, and T7 is the name of a vertebrae in your spine. A picture is worth a thousand words, but what if every single one was a lie? A girl died that day. She echoes through the hollowness of your bones and it haunts you. She found herself a home, eloquent and grand joys, curled up between the vertebrae of your spine. Ironic, because you never had a backbone. And she snuck up through your rib cage, fracturing every weak bone and suffocating your beating heart. She sprouted up through your lungs as a last attempt to keep you from being a murderer. A lie is worth a million words. Thousands of secret love affairs tied up with your twisted tongue. No wonder you can never tell the truth. Ooh, that last line. Oh, still gives me chills. Like, I remember who that's about, too. That was a good one. That was exactly what they deserved at the time. Almost forgiven now. I really don't care. I became invisible and fragile. I became a message in a bottle, a soundproof room. I became a victim of my own defenses hastily drawn up at the front line when I barely knew which end the bullet came out of. If I pulled the trigger, I'd conquer the demons. If I pulled the trigger, I could finally fly. Right? Whew, that one was rough. A lot of people reblogged that one though actually, which is interesting. And this one's a really long one. Um, and so the title that I titled this was 10 Steps to Calming Your Anxiety Attack, in parentheses, A Letter to the Lovers. And so the way I did it was kind of like what I want to say to certain people, and there were 10 people. Number one, the day I met you, I knew my life was changed. They say number one is always the hardest, but for you, it was easy. Your freckled face and hair as red as the lunar eclipse was so enchanting to me that I memorized which bus stop you got off at and the way your voice sounded when you called the girl who made me want to die, baby. So dramatic, Jesus. That's only number one. 
two, breathe in, breathe out, count to ten. You told me as I sobbed into your arms that day, and I tried my hardest to count that high, but all I did was rack up insecurities and thought about all the reasons that a beautiful boy could do such horrible things, and how many times you told her you loved her, and how many things you saw in her that you couldn't in me. Three, you were odd, love. You were the wrong turn on the map, the destination I never expected to make. I never understood how anyone could make a surprise stop until you. You kept my feet on the ground for a second longer, keeping me above the water. For a second, I felt like I could survive. Four, you are one of the most beautiful people I have ever met, even if you weren't always as compassionate as you should have been. You couldn't let yourself get too close, and as heartbreaking as it was to realize I never stood a chance, you taught me how it feels to ache in the good way. Five, halfway there, it should get easier, but with you, it never did. No matter how hard you tried to get me amped up and rowdy, and it seemed as if I could never relax. I knew there was something hiding behind those brown eyes and freckles I adored, and I was right. Six. Something about your reckless spirit enamored me, laughing until my lungs gave out, and the feeling of being out of breath after chasing after you made my heart ache for all the adventures you could pull me on, and the summer sun bleached my hair but never once touched those feelings. Seven. I fell for your laugh, which is saying something, considering you were the one who made me laugh all the time. You made me feel beautiful and inadequate all in one. You never even saw me to give me a chance, which unfortunately added to my ripening anxieties about love. But it wasn't your fault, dear. Everyone has a hard time seeing what's right under their nose. Eight, I've learned a lot quickly, swiftly, and quietly with my head down so as not to draw any attention to myself. If I didn't send any distress signals, I couldn't possibly be crashing, right? Well, that didn't stop you standing a full foot taller than me from seeing me. You coddled me when I became weak and told me that it was okay to feel that way and that I could start over again and eventually I'd make it all the way to 10. Nine, you've made me feel more alive than I felt in years. You're like an antidepressant for the ache in my chest that has just been getting bigger and bigger and I can never find a way to make it stop. But you have quite unexpectedly too. I wasn't looking for you. I had just accepted being empty. Turquoise looks good on you, darling. 10. It's happening again. No, 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 no. You can't do this to me. I'm a human being. No, no, no. Before you, I had made it so far. I started to believe that men weren't all terrible people and that I was worthy of being treated like the princess you once treated me as. But of course, you turned your back to the small little girl. Take a deep breath, darling. Count to 10. You'll be okay. That one has got a lot to unpack. There are 10 people that I'm talking about. And I know one, two, three, four, five, six. I know who six out of ten were written about. The other four are very vague. Very vague. All right, now that um, I am taking myself through a very cringeworthy and ugly memory lane, I guess I will let you go enjoy the rest of your day. I hope you enjoyed me embarrassing myself, and stay tuned for the next video.